Hey YouTube, welcome to my channel. If you're new here and you want more maths content, then please consider subscribing. If you learned something, then hit that like button. I hope you enjoy my video. What is completing the square? So in maths, we use completing the square for a number of useful reasons. When we solve, we rearrange for the unknown x. But with quadratics, what makes them more difficult is we cannot rearrange for the unknown. Because you have x squared plus x plus whatever, you can't just rearrange for x, right? Because x is in two places. Now, so far, we have used factorizing to rearrange for x. But what happens when we can't factorize? So, so far, we have always been able to factorize. What completing the square does is it rewrites the quadratic with the unknown in one place. This allows us to solve any quadratic without even needing to factorize. So what might happen after the end of today is that you don't even want to factorize quadratics anymore. You're just happy to complete the square. If you're that advanced, that's, that's a good thing if you prefer to do that. Another use for completing the square is it allows us to sketch quadratics. We'll cover this at a later date. When I do functions, I'm going to show you um, completing the square in terms of um, sketching quadratics. So I'm just going to show you how it works, then you're going to see in practice how to complete the square. So let's expand these following brackets. So x plus 3 squared. So that means write out x plus 3 twice. We have x squared. Then we have x times 3, which is 3x. Then we have another 3x. So 3x plus 3x is 6x. Then the final is 3 times 3, which is 9. OK. So x squared plus 6x plus 9 is the expansion of x plus 3 squared. Now let's see what happens with the next one. x plus 3 squared plus 1. Well, we've already done the expansion for this, right? And then we have that plus 1 at the end. So that simplifies to x squared plus 6x plus 10. Next one, same thing. We know what that expands to. So we have x squared plus 6x plus 9 then subtract 5. Okay, next one, x plus 5 squared minus 2. So we're changing it slightly, it's not x plus 3 squared. I'm just going to do write the expansion or the double brackets here for a second, just because I don't want it all in the way. So you have x times x is x squared, x times 5 is 5x, then we have another 5x here, so together that makes 10x. Then we have 5 times 5 is 25. And then we have that minus 2 at the end. So you have x squared plus 10x plus 23. Then the final one, x plus a all squared. So you have x plus a, x plus a. So you have x times x is x squared. x times a is xa. But because a represents the number here, I'm going to write ax, then another ax, then you have the a squared. So ax plus another ax is 2ax, plus a times a is a squared. Okay, why have I done all this expansion? What do you notice about the coefficient of the x term in each case? So what I mean by that? is look at the coefficients of the x terms compared to what's in here. What do you guys notice? Look at what I've highlighted in yellow compared to what I have highlighted in orange. Essentially, everything that is in yellow highlight is double what is in the orange. And that's the key to completing the square, yeah? so. Basically, what we're going to end up doing is rewriting everything that's on the right side, Joe, with the yellow highlights. We're going to rewrite everything on the right side back into the left side. Everything that's on the left side is what we call a completed square, meaning x is in one place in a bracket with a square on top. I'm going to show you how to do that. It's really simple. So the key thing with completing the square is that we only complete the square on the x squared and the x term. So we only worry about these bits because it's all about the coefficient of x. Yeah, it's all about the coefficient of x. The next key thing because of that is look at this last line. We have 
x plus a squared equals x squared plus 2ax plus a squared. Because it's all about the coefficient of x, if I subtract a squared, meaning if I move it to the other side, we get this. x plus a squared minus a squared is x squared plus 2ax. Meaning, we can very easily write any quadratic in completed square form by halving the coefficient of x, that's just a, and then we subtract that number squared. So I'm going to show you exactly how we do this in practice. And what's interesting is that any numbers on the outside don't make any difference. They don't actually do anything. We just keep bringing it down and they just carry on in calculation. Express x squared plus 6x in the form x plus p or squared plus q, where p and q are constants, basically asking us to complete the square. So remember what we said, the coefficient of x gets halved and it gets put in a bracket squared, yeah? Remember this? So the coefficient of x gets halved and it's getting put in a bracket squared. So we introduce a bracket and we say x, and then we half six, that's three. Then we close the bracket squared. That's just the beginning bit, yeah? The x plus a squared. Then we always have to subtract that number squared. So once we've introduced this, we always subtract this number squared. So we subtract the number three squared. And that's it, that's in completed square form. We just need to simplify. So that would be x plus three squared minus three squared, which is nine. And that's your answer. So the next one is express x squared minus four x plus two in the completed square form. Now remember, completing the square only is applied to the first x squared and x terms. The plus two, forget about the plus two, it doesn't do anything. So what do we do? We introduce a bracket, x, we half the coefficient of x. Yeah, it's minus four, we half that is minus two. Close the bracket, squared. Now you can see it's the exact same form as the one above. Then we subtract this number squared. It's the number two squared. Now remember you guys, there was this plus two, right? We don't complete the square on that, but it does need to continue on. So we continue that plus two one at the end. Yeah. Then we simplify and we're basically done. So we have x minus two squared minus two squared, which is four plus two. So we have x minus two squared minus four plus two is minus two. If you were to expand this, you would get the x squared minus 4x plus 2, yeah? If we are authorized to use a calculator, the quadratic formula is perhaps the easiest way to solve quadratics, particularly if you invest in the Casio FX991EX. You guys see me use a calculator, right? This one. The model for this is the Casio FX991EX. So, let's just practice using the quadratic formula. So, let's see how we um, use the quadratic formula. So, solve x squared minus 8x plus 11. So, we write down first what a, b, and c are. So, the coefficient of x squared is a. That's just 1 here. b is the coefficient of x is minus 8. And c is just the number at the end. And then we plug it in. So, we get x equals... The negative of b, negative of b just means change the sign on b. So minus 8 becomes plus 8, plus or minus the square root of b squared, b squared, make sure you use a bracket, minus 4ac all over 2 times a. Now, I'm going to give you guys a tip. Examiners want to see this step before you go straight to the answer. And that is, do you know this b squared minus 4ac? 
type that into the calculator first. Type that in first, and then put your full answer in. So we have 8 plus or minus root 20 over 2. You get a mark for typing in b squared minus 4ac. It's really weird. They, they at Excel exam, exam boards, you know, they're, they're really strange in that sense. All right, so let's type the whole thing in. So you have fraction 8 plus root 20 over 2. Now, you do not need to go back and change the plus to a minus because it'll just be 4 minus root 5. So your answer here is 4 plus or minus root 5.